to see if some costs. Uh, so that's one hypothesis. The other hypothesis then is that people do consume more calories at restaurant meals, uh, but they offset these calories throughout the day. Um, so I think, so at this point, what I'll do is first just to motivate uh, these hypotheses a little more, we will watch uh, maybe about 10 minutes of various clips from Supersize Me, uh, and then I'll talk about what our data actually say and how perhaps they relate to Morgan Spurlock's experiment. He's a guy in the movie, uh, or how they perhaps don't. So he's going to just eat a McDonald's for 30 days straight. I gained 24 and a half pounds. My liver turned fat, and my cholesterol shot 65 points. My blood fat 
percent for the eleven to eighteen percent. Still below the national average of twenty two percent for men and thirty percent for women. I do double primary coronary heart disease, making myself twice as likely to have heart failure. I felt depressed and exhausted most of the time. My mood swung to die, and my sex life was non existent. I craved this food more and more when I ate it, and got massive headaches when I didn't. In my final blood test, many of my body functions showed signs of improvement, but the doctors were less than optimistic. So basically what you could view this as being is uh, essentially sort of a huge like sometimes out of sample experiment in the sense that it's very unlikely uh, that anybody would actually have a diet that was that bad for a sustained period of time. So what he was doing is he was, you know, he was eating like three meals a day at McDonald's, uh, which probably there's, right, there's almost what he does, and he was supersizing. So I think he was eating something like 4,500 to 5,000 calories per day when you know, the, the daily allowance that he needs is probably around 2,000, maybe like 2,200 or something. Um, so there's no doubt that if you do expose yourself to this food on a repeated basis uh, early and often that it's going to have very, uh, um, very serious health effects. Um, but... I think one thing that, that really sort of uh, sticks out there is that, in some sense, you know, after he eats that like massive meal the first time, probably if he didn't go back and force himself to eat the second time, he wouldn't really eat very much at all for the rest of the day. I mean, in the fact, that he kind of threw up most of it, but assuming he was able to sort of keep us fit down. Uh, and a normal individual actually sort of wouldn't behave that way, right? Like if you eat a big meal at a restaurant, like you have a big lunch, then you're probably gonna eat somewhat less during dinner or something. Um, and so because of that, there can actually be some offsetting effects, which isn't to say that you should try to overeat and just say like, oh, well, then I'll just eat less, uh, but like eat less later on. Uh, uh, but it is the case that probably you're not gonna overeat by quite as much. I mean, you'll overeat by some amount during say lunchtime, but over the entire course of the day, you're probably not gonna overeat by quite as much as you would think. Yeah, I mean, so when you say okay, do you mean like okay, sort of physiologically, or they're like sort of feel okay they'll, doing it? I mean, they'll gain weight, they'll be obese, right. and it, the damage to their body isn't as severe because it kind of grew over time, or maybe it is because they are obese, but how his reaction was to it, it was, their reaction was to it, they wouldn't grow it up after, I mean, they already, they wouldn't have constantly given that fear. So. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with that. I think that if you kind of like ease into it, it's going to be much easier to have this bad habit than uh, if you're eating healthily and then suddenly sort of shock yourself uh, with, with this sudden uh, influx of, of fast food. Um, and so I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's probably somebody out there who eats it like McDonald's three times a day, every day. Um, and, okay, well, so then, yeah, that, I would say that is uh, definitely unhealthy. Um, the, but then the other question is sort of like what the counterfactual is in terms of what somebody would eat at home, right? So, I mean, we can't say in the study for sure, but uh, like my strong suspicion is that somebody who eats at McDonald's regularly, not even three times a day, but let's just say like somebody who sort of has like fast food meals as one of their like daily meals, maybe once or even twice a day, right? Um, I suspect that the, uh, you know, that their diet at home is probably not that healthy either, right? So it's not like, like the choice that's being, the choice that's, or the trade being made is not like, you know, let me go home and eat like steamed vegetables and, you know, like chicken with the skin removed or something like that versus let me eat like a Big Mac at McDonald's, but it's probably like, you know, let me eat something that's pretty unhealthy at home versus let me eat something that's unhealthy at McDonald's. So the, which is not to say, like, I'm not, I don't want to um, sort of give the impression that I'm saying McDonald's food is healthy. That's absolutely not the case. Instead, what I think, so the main takeaway we got from, from the paper, uh, at least the, the way that we interpret the results is that it's not really sufficient to just target like one area or one um, channel through which people can access unhealthy foods, right? So if it's like, you take away McDonald's, but people are then eating like chips or like fried chicken or whatever, or, or like hamburgers at home, um, you know, that's not really going to improve uh, nutrition overall. And so you really kind of have to have like a comprehensive solution. In some sense, because like, and this sort of comes back to the economics of it, you know, you're dealing with like consumers and they have multiple options available to them. If you just like sort of shut off one option uh, of unhealthy calories, but they have other options they can sort of substitute to, uh, then you're not necessarily going to improve health all that much. And the thing that I think is interesting is that the, there have also been studies of like uh, intervention programs in schools where they're like trying to improve school nutrition and then they don't find like a big effect on obesity. And one thing they notice that like just because you feed the kids like healthy lunches at school doesn't mean that you're actually improving uh, their, nutrition, their nutrition in terms of like the food they bring to school or what they eat at home and so forth. And unless you're kind of targeting all of those areas, it's hard to get a sustained uh, improvement. Oh, the super size me? Yeah, one. Right. He lost weight. Or? Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> so was he choosing like salads, or was he just was he always choosing? Uh -huh. Right. So I can I can sort of believe that too in the in the sense. Well, I mean, so if you specifically chose, like if you wanted to, you could lose weight eating McDonald's if you like just choose the green salads, which are things that they basically have on the menu, not because people buy a lot of them, but because they want to be able to say to like policymakers, like, look, we're giving people healthy options. Um, but the other thing that kind of also, let me just I'll just conclude on this, and we'll uh, on Wednesday we'll uh, sort of talk about the other results in other studies. But um, the other thing that, that I think is that you know there's these fad diets like the Atkins diet and so forth, where it's like you can only eat a specific thing, so like no carbs or um, whatever. And I think if you just limit yourself to eating one type of food, basically you get sick of that food, and so you naturally reduce how much you're eating. So it's certainly possible that if you were just eating like a very small number of choices of McDonald's, you just get sick of McDonald's. And if you don't force yourself to keep eating it, then you might um, you know then you might start eating less. But I mean, in reality, it's like people would be switching between fast food chains and have larger options and not eat McDonald's all the time.